What's going on guys? Welcome back to the TCG Empire YouTube channel. Today we're taking a look at a very fun deck and it's a very fun deck that is good both, you know, in the sake of having fun um, and then competitively. Now it's not the most competitive deck, but it definitely is able to, you know, set up fast and that deck is Hisuian Zoric V-Star. So Hisuian Zoric V-Star has a very unique attack. Ticking Curse, it does 50 damage. Uh, for each of your Pokemon that have damage counters on it. It also has a unique V-Star where you can discard your hand and draw 7. So you're able to draw through your deck tremendously with this card because if you play Research into Phantom Star, that's 14 new cards you're seeing, plus the draw for turn is 15, as well as any other abilities you see. So as we break down those abilities, we'll do some math and break it down. But the Suian Zoric V-Star, really solid. Uh, with the deck, we are also playing Gengar. Gengar has the Netherworld Gate ability, where if it's in your discard, you can put it onto the bench, and if you do, you put three damage counters on it. This means that you get to power up, you know, the board with damage, and uh, it just sets up math great. In conclusion with that, we are running Damage Pump. Damage Pump lets you move two damage counters from one of your Pokemon to another Pokemon in any way you like, so that Gengar that just put 30 damage on the board lets you basically move 20 damage anywhere. And so this means that you can turn a Hisuian Zohark from swinging for just 50 damage into 150 because you move two damage counters. Now the new card from 151 we're running with it is Dodrio. Dodrio has a very unique ability where once during your turn you can put one damage counter on it. If you do, you draw a card. And it also has Ballistic Beak. Ballistic Beak has the ability to deal 280 damage if you have nine damage counters on you. So 9 times 3 is 27, you add the 0, 270, plus 10 is 280, and phenomenal card, it helps with the late game when you're just drawing weird, and it also works in conjunction with being able to power up Ticking Curse even further. Along with that, we are playing Squawkabilly just to kind of set up the turn 1s that we, you need, and Gengar getting thrown in the discards, and we are also playing Radiant Alakazam, with Double Turbo only being the energy that you can run as far as running 2 energy uh, through one attachment you do minus 20 so in reality Zor could hit 300 you're hitting 280 but painful spoons makes it a lot easier to hit math which means that you can use cards like cleansing gloves to KO something like Gardevoir or Mew and then you also have the ability to use justified gloves in conjunction with the Alakazam to hit 330 to KO a Charizard we're also running Gapejaw Bog this is the stadium that you want to run as it allows you to uh, bench Pokemon and damage them so that way you don't have to rely on damage pumps in case you don't see them or some are prized. Um, aside from that though, there's not too much going on with this deck. It's just streamlined going for fun. And what I wanted to say was that if you use a research into Phantom Star, that's 14 cards. And on top of that, if you use Dodrio, um, if you have four on board for whatever reason, that means that you're seeing 18 cards. And that is insane. You're seeing almost a third of your 60 card deck in a single turn through the use of a supporter, an ability, and a V-Star. So it's really solid. So with that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys could do me a favor, if you do enjoy it, smash the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Also, real quick, I just want to say um, I made hoodies. Zach and I have hoodies that we made um, for the upcoming Sacramento Regionals. But if you guys are interested, I will throw up pictures right now. And then if you guys are interested in getting a hoodie for yourself, let me know down in the comments. And then I will also try to figure out ways in which you can get a hoodie for yourself. Um, know real quick that the hoodies uh, will probably just have the logos. The ones with the last names are kind of, you know, certified towards me and Zach just because they are something that we both came up with. And this channel has been something that we both kind of got brought together with so these will be the special editions with the last names on them but if you guys want a normal hoodie with the logo on the front as well as in the back as the picture showed just let me know and i will see what i can do but that being said thank you guys for everything and i'll catch you in the gameplay later Alrighty, guys getting into the first game with hisuian zork i haven't played this deck in a long time and it is definitely something that is going to be fun for sure. Um, Alexa, turn my lights on. There we go. Now we have a little bit more light in the background. But um, Hisuian Zork, 
It's always been a fun card, very reminiscent of, you know, things like Emerald Break, as well as, you know, kind of setting up the rest of the format. So it seems like we're playing against a Dialga deck. We're going to see what we can do. Our starting hand, not looking too strong, but we do have access to the uh, Dodrio. We do play a couple switching cards, so hopefully we can hit one of those in the coming turns. And then uh, we will be good. Thankfully, we do have access to a supporter going first, which means that we won't have to worry too much about what we do. My opponent is playing the big bad Dialga deck. Uh, this is the one that, you know, tries to take two turns in a row. Thankfully, though, we are playing one prizers until the Zor comes out. So definitely not going to be too bad. We just have to make sure that we can get a basic Pokemon here. So. Uh, we do get another Dodua, which is nice. Um, I'm going to bench it. We'll play the Gapejaw Bog, and then we'll play Iono. Shuffle my opponent's hand away. That way they don't have access to the turn 2 Magnemite. And uh, looking at this hand, it's actually pretty good. So we'll use a Capturing Roma. Hopefully we can hit Tails. We hit Head, so we can actually find an Evolution Pokemon. Um, so we'll just go for the Dodrio. That way we have access to 2 next turn. And then what we'll have to do here is we'll just use the Ultra Ball. And we will grab the uh, Hisuian Zork. I don't think that there's anything else we're going to need. We actually could grab the Squawkabilly. Uh, which I don't hate the idea of doing. It's just a shame that we would have to throw away two Dodrios. But we do actually have um, kind of a off-putting hand. So... Thankfully, though, with the Dodrios, we can bring them back with Super Rod, providing that it's in the deck, and it is. So, um, I actually don't hate that. We'll go for the Squawk, and then what we can do, just so that way, if we have to, um, if this Doduo gets knocked out, we'll attach the uh, card here, and we'll use the Squawk and Seize, which does put damage on the board, which is nice. And now looking at this draw, can we hit tails? Can we hit heads again? Which is not the end of the world. It actually means that we can go Gengar. And then now we can Ultra Ball, get rid of the Gengar and the Cleansing Gloves. Because we're not going to need those. And then we can grab the Hisuian Zork. Next turn, Evolve. And then we have access to a Supporter. So it's not the end of the world. We just have to be a little bit careful on how things go, but we do have access to the Gengar with the Netherworld Gate, meaning that we can put three damage counters in play. And then all we really need is a damage bump. So if my opponent is able to kind of accelerate here, and it seems like they whiffed, so I'm not opposed to that. So my opponent most likely not going to be able to actually set up a back-to-back -back turn, which is fine with me. They are going to be able to evolve here. They can use the Stark Ronos to take a knockout. But providing that we hit what we need, we actually should be able to set up, you know, what we want to do. If my opponent has one more uh, Metal Energy, then they can take the knockout. There's the Metal Burst. 40 plus, sorry, correction. I thought it was 40x for some reason, but all is well. So now we have access to the Zork. We kind of have to dig as much as possible. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go Zork. Um, we'll use Research, and then if we have to, we will use the Phantom Star. So we actually do have quite a bit that we can do right now. So we can go Zork. And then we can go, let's see, Zork, Zork, into bringing some things back. So yeah, I don't hate that. So now we can go Gengar, use the gate, and then we can use the Zorg here. We can use the damage pump to actually take damage off of this Zorg, and we can put it on the Doduo. We can play the Super Rod, putting back in the Dodrios, uh, and I guess a... um. I kind of have to dig for the energy, so I'm just going to go with the one here. And then we'll use the Phantom Star. 
And as long as we draw a DTE, which we did, uh, we should be able to take a knockout because we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, minus the 20 from the DTE. We are in a good spot here. We have access to evolve, and from there, my opponent concedes. So that was a super quick uh, game number one. We were able to pull off the turn two knockout, putting a ton of pressure. So with that being game one, let's hop right into a game number two. Alrighty, guys, getting into game number two here. Hopefully, we're able to set up, you know, as much as we can, doing what we need to do. And from there, um, just being able to, you know, set up how we want and having access to battle vip pass a supporter um i don't actually hate how things are going for us so we are playing against a bidoof um so there's a couple of decks that can actually run bidoof could be an orc variant i guess we're about to find out could be chin pao and we're actually playing against glamora so glamora can be a little bit annoying actually as it does have the ability to um, I believe it's Glamora EX. It might, I might be getting the name wrong. The new generation Pokemon kind of throw me off. But um, overall, things aren't looking too bad here. So um, what we'll do... I don't think I need to dig too much here, actually. But I have the Evo for next turn. I think, honestly, I'm just going to go Doduo and Zork. And then what we can do here is go Gape, Gape Jaw Bog um and honestly we could just void return into this zorg that way if it gets ko'd we can promote the one with the energy and if worse comes to worse we just have to search for an energy but next turn we have evo we can ultra ball find ourselves a gengar and research it away and then we have access to the supporter as well so not too bad the only thing we have to keep in mind is that we do have weakness um but it shouldn't be too bad Let's see, the Glimmit has Ascension, so similar to the old school Trevenant style, and there is the Glimora EX. So Glimora, as long as it's in the active, your opponent can't have more than three benched Pokemon. If they have four or more, discard until they have three. So um, it's going to be a little bit awkward because our damage output is going to be nerfed, and my opponent is going to be able to one-shot a... Um, uh, v Star Zork, so I need to make sure that I can control this damage output as much as possible. So there's the Gape Job Bog doing its job, putting 20 damage, and I put it going for Iono. Unfortunately, shuffling away our decent hand, but it's not the end of the world. Um, we actually draw into some decent cards as we do have the Glamora here or the Gengar. So my opponent is going to be able to take two knockouts here because this Glamora is going to just ruin us. But we do actually, you know, gain access to... <coughs> Excuse me. We do gain access to um, the alakazam we do gain the ability to actually kind of set up some more so um we'll have to see what we can do so there is the hisuian zor going up and we top deck a gape jaw bog not going to do too much for us um i could bench this zork but you know i definitely need to find the alakazam and this will put damage down this will put damage down so if I can draw an Evo plus Gape Jaw, or not Gape Jaw Bog, but Damage Pump and a way to get what I need, I should be okay. So uh, Justify Gloves isn't going to do much for us, so we'll just go for the research here. And if we can hit the Capturing Aroma, we do have two. So we do hit Heads on the first one, so we can actually find an Evolution, which means that we can go for the Zork. This means that we can evolve into the Zork. And I think this might be the most awkward match matchup that we could play. And we do hit Tails, which means now we can get the Alakazam out. So we will bench the Alakazam. And someone has come to say hi. So with the Alakazam, we can actually take a knockout on this Gimmit. Or Glimmit, as it's called. 
and I just have to make sure that the kitten does not mess with anything. We actually hit the damage pump, which is fantastic because now what this means is that we can go damage pump. Um, we're already going to be KO'd, but just to put more of a damage output, we can move a damage counter to the Hisuian Zord. And then from there, uh, we kind of have to dig. So we'll use the Phantom Star, drawing us a couple cards, and we do get the Dodrio. Now we can use the Dodrio to put a damage counter on us. In order to draw a card, we do get Professor's Research, so not looking too bad. We can hit 150. We're going to be able to two-shot this Glamora. Um, and if my opponent benches another one, then we just go Radiant Alakazam. And uh, we go from there. Not looking too bad now. And we do have access to Gengar next turn. So providing that you know my opponent can't do too much, we should be in an A-OK -okay spot. Limiting our bench is a little bit annoying, but it definitely isn't the end of the world. Um, so there's the Glimmit coming down. And again, we do have access to the Alakazam. So we can do 20. My opponent going to be able to take a knockout here. And as long as we can find an evolution, as well as some more damage to put, we will be good. We do have the Squawk ability and we do have the Ultra Ball, which means that we will be able to KO this Glamora. And we can also move 20 to this limit. Meaning that my opponent's going to be behind. And as long as my opponent doesn't have a way to you know, take two more prize cards, we should be A-OK. -okay. So we will promote the Zork. And we top deck a Dodro. Um, so what I'm going to do first is we'll use the Zooming Draw just to draw one card. And we get a boss's orders not going to do too much. We'll use the painful spoons to move it to the limit. That way we can take a prize. And we're actually going to be able to map my opponent in prizes. And we actually top, not top deck, but off the prizes we do get the Zorg. Which means now we can go Ultra Ball, just getting rid of these two. So we're not going to need them. We can get Dodrio out. That way next turn we can get out the uh Doduo into Dodrio to have some more cards to draw. And now we're going to be able to take a knockout here. And we do have two bosses orders, meaning that my opponent, if they decide to bench another Glimmit, uh, we can potentially boss it. And things are looking pretty good now. It's all going to be about just controlling the fact that my opponent can't limit what we're trying to do. There's the Super Rod putting back the Glimmit. And it does have the ability to use Ascension, which is something to actually keep in mind. My opponent goes that route. I might have to attack with Dodrio first, even though it's going to be a little bit awkward. We can potentially hit 480. There's the Glimmit coming down. No Gape Jaw Bog to do too much, but... As long as they don't get rid of our hand, we will be in a golden spot for a golden opportunity. There's the cross switcher bringing up the Alakazam. And now it is going to be make or break on if we hit one of our switching cards. Because we need to hit a switching card and we also need to be able to find a way. If we hit another DTE actually we'll be okay, but... I'm not sure what my opponent just used. It might have been Grant. Yeah, they used Grant. Okay. So there's the Grant. Um, so the first thing we'll do to thin some cards, is we'll go into the Capturing Aroma. Gives us an idea of what's in the deck. Grab the Dodrio. So in the deck, we do have a switch and we do have one energy left. So as long as we find one of those two, we'll be okay. So we can go to the Dodrio, and we can bench the Doduo. And now it just comes down to if we can draw what we need. So we do have the Dodrio taking 10, draw no energy, unfortunately. And we get it off of the zooming draw. And we do hit the switch, which is fantastic. So now we go into the Zork. We can use the boss's orders, bringing up the Glimmit. And then 
Um, not too much going to go on. Let's hit for the 230. And now we are down to one prize. And as long as my opponent doesn't have another switching card to bring up our Radiant Alakazam, uh, we'll be okay. If they do, then we're going to have to dig for it. We'll go Iono, Dodrio, Dodrio. We have used our V-Star, unfortunately, but it's just going to be kind of a game in the long run there. But if my opponent decides to bench two Pokemon, we can KO a Glimmit with Alakazam, so... Definitely not the end of the world. My opponent gets to put a Pokemon to the bottom of our deck. Not having much need for the Gengar. And there's the boss's orders again. Industrious Incisors 4-3. Another Bibero coming down. And my opponent's just trying to do everything that they can. There's the Ultra Ball. They are going to be able to put down a Glimmit. And there's only... A little bit of damage on the board. And my opponent concedes, so they must not have hit something or a way to retreat. So, um, I think that was a quick number game two. Let's head right into a game three. See if we can do the same exact thing when it comes to the Hisui and Zork V-Star. Alrighty, guys. Into the third and final game with Hisui and Zork V-Star. It's been a good wild ride so far. Been able to hit high numbers, low numbers, dealing with... You know, benches being blocked, weakness, we've dealt with everything in the book, now it all comes down to this, can we go for the 3 and 0? Oh? So, we're going to draw our hand, and we do start O to O, but it is okay, because we do have access to that battle VIP pass, and it's not looking too bad. So we are playing against Chien Pao, Chien Pao can one-shot us, but thankfully, we can one-shot Chien Pao back. Um, so the things that we'll go for here is a Zork and the Manaphy. It's going to be good for us to get that down. Um, we could go for the Squawkabilly. Um, I actually don't hate the idea of doing that either. So this is what we'll do. We'll go for the Squawk. And then we will attach. We'll use the Capturing Aroma. Regardless of what we hit, it will be beneficial. So heads, this means that what we can do is grab the Gengar. And then we can use the Squawk ability. And just in case my opponent is playing something awkward in their deck, we'll attach just to be safe. We'll put the Gape Jaw Bog down. Now we can draw. And look at that. A fantastic hand as we hit Switch among everything else. We do have the Doduos. Meaning that we can put two of these down. And now what we can do, we can use the Gengar. Switch into the Zork, and then next turn we are good. Now it might seem awkward that, you know, I put only one Hisuian Zork into play, but we can actually attack with the Dodrio if we need to. Um, it does 10 plus 30 for each damage counter on it, and if we get it up to 9 damage counters for whatever reason, then we have the ability to kind of set up how we need to. Now, I do run into the issues of my opponent going Greninja. Um, I should have definitely kept one spot open, but, you know, if uh, my opponent doesn't see that, then we'll be okay. And here is the kitty coming to say hi. Just throw her on the bed real quick. That way she can go hang out with her brother. And my opponent milling three off of Pokestop. And that is insane. So we are going to be able to take the initiative and take a knockout on this Chien Pao. Assuming we can find one more or two more damage modifiers. Which we should be able to. I don't think it's going to be too difficult for us. So my opponent going for that battle VIP pass into Frigibax and Bidoof. And the nice thing is, if we do hit uh, something like a boss's orders, we can actually KO the Frigibax and set my opponent back even further. So um, I'm trying to think if there's any world in which I want to Pokestop. I don't think there is. I think I just safely attach here. Go Zork. We use the Phantom Star's ability. 
Drawing us some cards. We do get damage pump, which means that we can take a knockout. And we can draw a couple more cards as well. So we can use the zooming draw. Do we get the boss's orders? Get a battle VIP pass, which is useless. So what we can do here is we'll use the damage pump. Damage pump. We can just move to the Dodrio and the Squawk. And then we have a fresh HP. Not too much going on. And we're going to be able to hit 230. Um, I'll use one more damage pump. And we'll take it off of this Dodrio and put it on Zork. Just so that way we have the max damage output. In case anything happens. Like my opponent gets a Palkia out. Uh, but right now things are looking a-okay. Thankfully with damage pump we can actually power up the Dodrio as well. And it does have the ability to one shot a Chien Pao. I have to let the cat out real quick. Let me do that. I'll be right back. My opponent's setting up the barrel here. Um, we do have the boss's orders, which means that if they do get a Bax Caliber out, we do have the ability to KO it. Um, if there's anything else that my opponent chooses to really go for, there's not too much that I'm going to be stressed about. My opponent even goes for the attack on the Squawk ability, which is fine. What we can do... It's just KO the Bax Caliber. They choose to take a knockout on this Guacabilly. They need three energy. Um, and if they don't bench another Frigibax, then we are in a good spot. So there are two energy on the Chien Pao. Industrious Incisors. They can load up more energy if they choose to, but it's not going to be quite enough to do much of anything. So there's the nest ball. Do they get out the other Frigibax if they do? And they do. So now we have to deal with the Chien Pals. But thankfully, we do have a Zorg in hand. We also have a double turbo. We also have Gengar. So. We can just take two prizes here and then go into two more prizes. Now my opponent's probably going to try and go for something like a Greninja play for the final two prizes but if they end up doing that that means that they're not in the best spot um so right now I do feel comfortable benching the Zork we can attach we could go for an Iono put my opponent down a few cards as we do have the knockout here so we'll go for it and we can draw ourselves the Manaphy which is useful for next turn and we can actually draw a couple more cards so we can use the zooming draw getting us plus one we do get boss's orders so if my opponent benches another one prizer next turn we have game we can go ultra ball now uh, we'll keep the manaphy just in case we need it we can go for another dodrio evolve and we even have the dodrio to attack with if necessary if we can't, you know, find something. And we do get Ultra Ball, which is good. So this means that now we can just use the Ticking Curse attack. 230. And just like that, we are down to two prizes. We get Damage Pump as well. Which means that we can set up this Dodrio if my opponent decides to go for another Chien Pao. And we are in a good spot. We also have access to another Hisuian, uh... Zorak V-Star, but I think what we'll do is go for the attack with the Dodrio. As I said, if there's 9 damage counters, it hits 280, minus the 20 from the DTE is 260. So, we can use the damage pump to put it to 50, and then we can move damage to it. So, we have to make sure though, and my opponent concedes as they can't get too much. So I think this just kind of showcases the sheer power of uh, what Zora can do and how consistent it is and how fast you can get the damage output going. So with that being said, guys, I want to thank you for watching today's video. If you did enjoy it, do me a favor, smash the like button, 
subscribe, turn on post notifications. And if you guys are interested in hoodies, let me know. That way I can figure out, you know, starting to get them out. That way you guys can get some for yourselves. But again, with that being said, I will catch you guys in tomorrow's video. Later.